This is my gaming laptop. It doesn't come with a keyboard or trackpad or even a battery. I had to bring my own. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really get this. This is how we did laptop when I was a kid. Strapping a Jackery to this thing doesn't make it a laptop. Well, that's not the way we do it now. They want us to do it this way. Well, I don't know that way. Why would they change laptop? Desktop is desktop. Laptop is laptop. Math is math. And this message is from our sponsor. Jackery, they just announced their new Solar Generator 1000 Pro, which features two 100 watt ports for fast charging, all while being two kilos lighter than the competition. Pre-order yours today at the link down below. On the surface, the new iGame G1 Plus from Colorful is an all-in-one desktop but beating in its chest is the heart of a laptop. It's got a mobile Core i7-12700H, an RTX 3060 6 gig laptop GPU, and two 8 gig SODIMM memory modules all crammed into this stealthy stand behind the display. More on that later, but first, I want to show you something unfortunate. <laughs> Still going up? This is Rage Mode, which unlocks the fans running them at their full 3700 RPM. Uh, colorful? Wouldn't the point of using mobile hardware to be power efficient and quiet? <laughs> ah, there we go. Compared to the default quiet fan profile, which allows the CPU to thermal throttle almost immediately, Rage Mode yielded a whopping 35% improvement in our Cinebench score. I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that most people wouldn't want to use the machine in this state, but hey, at least it's an option to allow the fans to compensate rather than just letting the system overheat. Take that, Apple. And besides, the iGame's true purpose is not to be a multi-threaded workstation powerhouse. It's got gaming right in the name. Maybe our quiet fan profile will fare better here? And it does. In quiet mode, not only is the machine nearly silent, but we see our CPU and GPU reach around 70 and 80 degrees respectively after a one hour loop of F1 2021. Not too shabby. But are we giving up any performance? As it turns out, the answer is no. While Rage Mode did have a significant impact in performance when we are maxing out our 12th gen core CPU, in gaming we saw just a 5 to 8 degree drop in temperature, which did improve our FPS a little bit, but the difference was so minimal that I would say it's definitely not worth making your machine sound like a jet engine. Speaking of FPS, our hardware performs as we'd hope in our esports and mainstream gaming representatives, CSGO and F1 2021, but in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is representing the demands of more current AAA titles, we barely managed 60 FPS with our settings at high and running at our native 1440p resolution. That's with or without Rage Mode, which gives us some concerns about the longevity of a machine like this. Though, maybe it can be upgraded? While we're opening it up, let's talk some other speeds and feeds. The display's 1440p, 165 hertz, with a measured pixel response time of about 5 milliseconds. Like a laptop, it's got Wi-Fi, speakers, and it's powered by a single power brick. God, these things just make my hands tired from yeah. having to, like, put so much force on them. So this is exactly why I didn't want to tear this down ahead of time. Oh, look at that. Like, I don't, oh, that's for the wireless charging. So here's the problem. There's no obvious screw holes except for the very bottom of the display. Once we took that off, there's a cable for the charger. And I can't, there's like no other screws. Can you try using a hammer? Oh God. So can you even upgrade it? We had this whole spiel about like, oh yeah, you can, it's got two M.2 slots and all this other stuff, but I don't even know how you get it out. I don't know if we'll end up using that. So I think that you gotta flex out the bottom and then it clips along the side, but it's a pain because you've got this cable attached and then you've also got the monitor to deal with. Anytime you wanna move it, 
So I'm gonna spin it and rest it on the display. Woo. And then the cable is going. Yep, okay, there you go. So after that's off, ah, this whole thing just comes right off. All right, it's not terrible, but also you're really, okay, and that's just on a ribbon cable. Let's take this off. I'd rather take the cable off instead of breaking it. There we go. Okay, that's a lot better. Unlike a laptop though, you can't just tuck it under your arm and take it on the road. There's no battery and it doesn't come with a keyboard and mouse. Raises some questions like, who needs this thing? And why are you still waiting to check out the Stealth Hoodie Pro on LTTstore.com? Considering this cable here and then the, how the display is kind of just out, um, I don't really think they expect many people to actually open this thing. As you can see, we've got two sodium slots for our memory. No, not four, so we can't upgrade that. We can maybe get bigger capacity, but it's already running at the max rated speed of 3200 megahertz. And then we have an extra M.2, at least it's a full 2280 slot for another SSD if we want to put that in there. Uh, but it looks like if you want to upgrade the other already installed SSD, you've got to take this whole thing out. So there's screws here, 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 here. Another minor issue, if you want to take the board out, you got to take the cooling stuff off too. I should probably call that something better than the cooling stuff. The Heat pipes, pipe. yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's thermal paste that's glued too. Ah, oh. Yep. You well, got, you did it? You got that? Well, because <laughs> I do, it's, a, it's a laptop. It's a laptop CPU. Oh, yeah. um, this is actually neat though. This is kind of cool. Hey, did you get all that? Yep. Yeah. I, I got to say, as much as I hate taking this thing apart, this is neat. I like that this just kind of like levers up and out of the way. So you actually don't have to remove uh, the entire heat sink or the cooling apparatus like I was worried about. Um, I think our motherboard is attached to something. I'm not sure if I just missed a screw or if it's just, oh, there's one screw here. Yeah, and here's our SSD. It's all the way on the back. So if you want to change the original one, yeah, just don't probably. <laughs> yeah, so just to recap, if, if we want to change our SSD, we've got to get all the way to the back we can add a new one and we can change the memory modules, but without any sort of major tinkering, that's about it. None of which would be a deal breaker of a problem if it weren't for the price. We spec'd out a small form factor PC with equivalent hardware and a better 1440p display. And even with the SFF tax, we managed it for a few hundred dollars less. Not to mention that it not only matches, but beats the iGame in just about every performance category. I mean, as far as our temps go, they probably would be more in line with Colorful's AIO if we packed all the hardware into a case rather than testing it on an open bench. But at least we've got something upgradable, which is a major problem for the iGame. And it's not some kind of fear mongering about, is your system future proof enough? The iGame can barely handle 1440p in AAA games now, let alone over the next few years as game developers pump out more and more demanding titles that are built for the hardware of the Xbox Series and PS5 era of consoles. And even ignoring performance. Like a laptop, the screen isn't detachable or usable with a separate input, making the entire system essentially e-waste once it falls behind the times. So who is buying these things? If they're overpriced and underperforming and lack flexibility. One option is cyber cafes or land centers. It's a breeze to deploy, has a dedicated ethernet port, and is gonna be good enough for esports games like CSGO or League for many years to come. But a 32 inch screen is huge for a facility like that where you would normally find 24 or at most 27 inch panels. So for most of the cafes that I've seen, these would be reserved for premium users with the majority of their seats targeting 1080p on much smaller monitors with much more budget hardware, which kind of makes it out of place in another way because at those 32 inch premium seats, I'd expect to be running an RTX 3080. Another market I can really see this in is the non-tech savvy mom and dad. You know, they're out there at the Best Buy. They want to find a compromise between the iMac that they think looks pretty and their kids desire to game. Well, fair enough for that, I guess. It's not entirely fair of us to compare the ease of use of something like this with a DIY desktop that we cobbled together on PC Part Picker. But it raises the question, if they really want something that's all in one, why stop here? You'd probably be better off just buying a laptop, which has even more all in its one. 
you get similar or even identical hardware, more portability, a much more appropriate display, an attached keyboard and trackpad. Well, you'll want to buy a mouse as soon as possible in either case. This unfortunately doesn't include one either. And surprisingly, you can get all of that for the same price or even much cheaper, like this Asus Tough unit with a 300 Hz Full HD display for only 1500 US dollars. That is a whopping $500 budget remaining for a monitor, a mouse, and Oh, damn it, where's our desk pad? Sorry. This desk pad from LTTstore.com. And if you don't need the portability, Intel's Nooks have become more and more modular over the years, featuring full fat desktop sockets and space for desktop GPUs. Expensive? Yes, but so is this, and at least it's more versatile. Even if you like how it looks with its gray blue stand, off center power button, and big eye game logo on the chin, there's no denying that other all in ones tend to look a little sleeker than this one from Colorful. Take the HP Envy All-in-One 34C 1070XT. Not only does it look nicer, but it's got an i7-12700 desktop CPU, an RTX 3060 GPU, though probably also a laptop one, 16 gigs of RAM at 4,000 mega transfer per second with two more sodium slots if you want to upgrade, Wi-Fi 6, a 3-in-1 memory card reader, and more I.O. than Colorful's unit for just a few hundred dollars more. Its 34-inch display only runs at 60 hertz, but it's 5K, so while the lower refresh rate is definitely an advantage for the iGame, the iGame has its own problems as well. Running 1440p at 32 inches diagonal is really pushing the bounds of acceptable pixel density, and HDR400 is just another way of saying, don't bother enabling HDR, you're probably better off without it and it can also be frustrating to use. Instead of a typical on-screen display menu for the monitor, you have to use Colorful's iGame Center, which doesn't actually give you any control over the brightness or color settings. For brightness, you need to use the side buttons that also act as volume control. And while there are OSD settings, they're not so you can actually adjust the color, they're just so that you can display specs on screen, not alter them. To be clear, the app itself overall is fine, and using it to change fan profiles or lighting does work. But for this much money, it's just missing a lot of the features found on just about any modern monitor. It's kind of like what Colorful set out to do was compete with Apple's iMac in terms of simplicity and price, and then they failed on both counts. Speaking of fails, get subscribed on Floatplane for blooper reels and behind the scenes content from your friends at Linus Media Group. It has a 15 watt wireless phone charger built into the stand though, and a built-in webcam. <laughs> Did we break the budget then? Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory? <laughs> no, no, we did not. We're gonna have all of those parts linked down below if you wanna build your own machine. And anyway, even if we did break the budget, we could afford it, thanks to our sponsor. FreshBooks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you're not an accountant. Well, some of you are, but that's why you're gonna love this software. It's built for freelancers and small business owners who don't have time to waste on invoicing and accounting and payment processing. In fact, FreshBooks users can save up to 11 hours a week by streamlining and automating pesky admin tasks like time tracking, following up on invoices and expense tracking with features like the new digital bills and receipt scanner. Over 24 million people have used FreshBooks and they love it for its intuitive dashboard and reports. It's easy to see at a glance exactly where your business stands and it's even easier to turn everything over to your accountant come tax season. 94% of FreshBooks users say it's super easy to get up and running with award-winning support, you're never alone. So try FreshBooks for free for 30 days, no credit card required by going to freshbooks.com slash Linus and getting started right now. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the eBlaster. It's a way to build yourself an all-in-one gaming machine that, okay, it's definitely a little <clears throat> kitschier than this, but deal? <laughs>